In this video, we're going to look at some quick worked examples of basic equations. Let's start off now with 3x is equal to 12. We want to solve for x, so x is the number that we're looking for. If we look at this equation, we started off with x, it was multiplied by 3 and that gave us 12. What we're going to do is use the inverse operation. So if it's multiplied by 3 to give us 12, we can say that the number will be 12 divided by 3. So all I'm doing is dividing both sides of the equation to get x by itself. 12 divided by 3 is going to give us 4, so we can see the number we're looking for was 4. 3 times by 4, quite clearly, is going to give us 12. If we had now x divided by 5 is equal to 2, we're going to now do the inverse. So if this was divided by 5 to give us 2, we can say that x would be equal to 5 times by 2. So all I'm doing now is using the opposite. So if it was divided, we multiply. If it was multiplied, we divide. So 5 times by 2, x is going to give us 10. That kind of makes sense. 10 divided by 5 does give us 2. So these are very straightforward equations. Let's look at one but slightly harder. Let's say we've got 2x plus 1 is equal to 7. So x started off, we multiplied it by 2, we added 1, and we got 7. What we're going to do is undo this. Now the technique that I'm going to use will seem quite a lot of work to begin with, but this will work for all equations, especially when we have the unknown on both sides. What we're going to do is undo this. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract 1 from each side. What I'm looking to do is get 2x by itself. So I want 2x is equal to some number. If we do something to one side of the equation, we've got to do it to both. So that's going to leave me now 2x is equal to 7 minus 1, which will give me 6. So all I've done is taken 1 from both sides now to have 2x by itself. At this stage, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. If I divide both sides of the equation by 2, we've got now that x will be 6 over 2 and x will be equal to 3. So if we just check that, 2 times by 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So we're undoing now the equation. Often when you're taught this lower down the school or in primary school, you work backwards. So you write now that 7 minus 1 divided by 2 gives x. I think this method is easier if we have unknowns, that's the value of x on both sides. So let's look at another one. Let's say we've got now 3x minus 1 is equal now to 11. So this time I've got minus 1. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to do the inverse and add 1 to both sides of the equation. We can see in this particular one I subtracted because we had add. We're always doing the opposite. So if we've got an add, we subtract. If we've got a subtract, we add. If we've got a multiply, we divide. If we've got a divide, we multiply. So adding 1 to both sides of the equation, we're going to end up with 3x is equal to 12. I now need just x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. If I do that, we're going to have now that x is equal to 12 over 3, so x is going to be equal to 4. And that makes sense. 3 times by 4 minus 1 is going to give us 11. 12 minus 1 is 11. So we can work these like so. Let's say I had now an equation and it was 2 plus x is equal now to 11. All we would do is get x by itself. Now this one is written slightly differently. It doesn't matter. This is the same as x plus 2 is equal to 11. We would simply subtract 2 from both sides. So we'd have minus 2 and minus 2, and that would give us that x is equal to 9. So don't worry that it's written a different way around. We would simply deal with it like so. We might have something slightly different. We might have 2 minus 4x is equal now to minus, and we might have on this one, minus 14. With this one, it looks a bit messy as we have the minus 4x. What I'm going to do here is add 4x to both sides. So if I add 4x to both sides, what we're going to have now is the following. We'll have 2 is equal to 4x minus 14. 
So all I've done is added the 4x to both sides. At this stage, I just want 4x by itself, so I'm going to add 14 to both sides. So if I add 14 to both sides, I've got 16 is equal to 4x, so adding the 14, and then I simply need to divide both sides by 4, divide both sides by 4, and we're going to have now 16 over 4 is equal to x, so we can see that x would be equal to 4. So all I've done is rearrange the equation. It doesn't matter if we've got a negative here, we can simply deal with it like so. There is an alternative approach to this, but in terms of what we would need to do, this is a perfectly fine way of doing it. So this is when we have an unknown, the value of x, on one side. The reason I've taken this approach, which might seem a long way around, is if we have an unknown on both sides. So let's look at an example of that. What we're going to have now is the following. We're going to have 2x and then we're going to have plus 1 is equal now to x plus and then we're going to have 15. Now this time we've got an x on both sides. What I'm going to do is look at the side with the most x's on. So this has got 2x, this has got 1x. I'm going to subtract an x from both sides. This method is called balancing an equation. If I take an x off both sides, 2x minus x just gives me 1x. I still have the 1. We've now got rid of the x on the right-hand side, as I've subtracted it, and we end up with 15. I now want x by itself, so I'm simply going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. If I subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, we will have x is equal to 14. We can go ahead and check that. 2 times by 14 is 28, plus 1, and that's going to give me now 14 plus 15. Does that work? Well, this now is 29. This is 29, so we can see that we have the correct answer. Let's look at another one. Let's say we had now 2x, and then we had plus 4, is equal now to, we'll have now 4x, and then we'll have now minus 6. This time I've got 2x plus 4. So I've got 2x on this side and I've got 4x on this side. So this time I'm going to take 2x from both sides. I only want x's on one side of the equation. Now if I take 2x off both sides, on the left hand side I'm just going to have 4. On the right hand side I'm going to have 2x minus 6. I want 2x by itself, so I'm going to add the 6 to both sides. So all I'm doing is undoing this equation using the inverse operations. So adding 6 to both sides, let's go ahead and do that. That's going to give me 10 is equal to 2x. So I've added 6 to this one, added 6 to this one. I want x, so I'm simply now going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. If we divide both sides of the equation by 2, we can see that we're going to have 5 on the left-hand side and we're going to have 1x on the right-hand side. So we can see that x is 5. If we look at this, 2 times by 5 will give me 10 plus 4 and that's going to be equal to 4 lots of 5, which is going to be 20 minus 6. That gives me 14. This gives me 14. So we can see that 5 is the correct answer. Let's do a slightly hard one. Let's say now we've got x minus 3 is equal to now 4, and then we're going to go for minus 3x. Now, this time I've got 1x here, but I've got minus 3x here. What I'm going to do to both sides of the equation is add 3x. We've got a negative 3x over here. So what we're going to do is add 3x to both sides. If I add 3x to both sides, I'm going to have 4x minus 3 will be equal to 4. So what I'm looking to try and do is get x's on one side, numbers on the other. So by adding the 3x to both sides, we can go ahead and start to solve. I only want 4x here, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So if I add 3 to both sides, just plus 3, we're going to have now 4x is equal to 7. At this stage, I just want x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 4. 
If I divide both sides by 4, I'm going to end up with a fraction as my answer, and that will be 7 over 4. And that's perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be a whole number or integer. It can be a fraction. So the answer to that equation is that x is going to be equal to 7 over 4. So don't worry if it doesn't come up to be a whole number. Of course, you could write this now as a mixed number, as we've got a top-heavy fraction. So you could write that x is equal to 1 whole and 3 quarters, or you could write that x is equal to 1.75. Either of those answers would be perfectly fine. And that's a slightly hard example at this level. OK, let's do one more. This time we're going to involve brackets. So what we're going to have is the following. We're going to have two lots of x plus 1 is going to be equal now to 3x and then we'll have minus, let's go for minus 5. So I want to solve the equation. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply the brackets out. 2 times by x will give me 2x. 2 times by positive 1 will give me plus 2. And that's equal now to 3x minus 5. At this stage, I've got 2x on this side, 3x on this side. So I'm going to take 2x from both sides. If I take 2x from both sides, let's just do that. On the left-hand side of the equation, I'm just going to have 2. On the right-hand side of the equation, I'm going to have x minus 5. I just want x by itself, so I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So every time I perform one of these operations, I'm doing the opposite. So I'm now going to add 5 to both sides. 2 plus 5 is 7, so x is going to be equal to 7. Now if we look at this, if x was 7, this would be 2 lots of 8, which gives me 16. This would be 3 lots of 7, which is 21, minus 5. 16 is equal to 16, so we can see that x is 7. So sometimes you might have to expand the brackets out now and collect up the like terms and just solve from there. So there are some very basic equations and we've looked at using the method of balancing an equation to solve. There are alternative methods, but in terms of when we have an unknown, that's an x or a y, on both sides of the equation, this method is potentially uh, the easiest way to go.